coming straight from a, another class. Okay, a couple. How many of you have had a long day? A lot. All right, so everybody get up. And stretch, however you want to stretch. Relax. Get non out. You feel good. So, and then when you're ready, you can sit back down. <laughs> I promise I'll stop being weird. But I wanted to do this first. So uh, you want to close your eyes and picture a man from Fredericksburg in his late twenties, a police officer for Aquia Harbor and a former member of the Chancellor Volunteer Fire and Rescue Squad. Now, picture a struggling mother with two children. One child is yet to be even a year old, and the other is between the ages of two and four. She wants desperately to put the older child in daycare, but simply cannot afford it. Can open your eyes. What came to your mind when you thought of these individuals in terms of what your your reaction towards them? How would you picture them as good people, as bad people? Do you feel sorry for them? Firefighters are really good people. I trust them. I do too. And while I don't think in any way, and I'm not in any way trying to imply that this is the norm, but the two individuals that I told you of were actually convicted traffickers within the United States. Within Fredericksburg, the case that I mentioned was a man who is from Fredericksburg who pled guilty to producing child pornography with an eight-year-old boy that he had known since the boy was six months old. And in that statement, he also admitted that he had performed sexual acts with the boy while he was either sleeping or unconscious and videotaped them. From his residence, there were recovered over 1,000 images of other children and 1,000 videos of child pornography. Another case from Fredericksburg is a 36-year-old man from Virginia who was sentenced to 10 years in prison for sex trafficking a 16-year-old from Maryland. I wish that that I had a brighter, you know, more positive thing to say about these individuals, but, but those are just some facts to really bring home how local this issue is. And that it's not just something that happens abroad, but it's something that happens right here in the United States. The struggling mother was actually from Texas, and she was caught prior to trying to sell the younger child, who was not yet a year old, and have an adult perform sexual acts with this baby, essentially, to pay for daycare for the second child. So there's a lot of a lot of surprising twists that you wouldn't expect, and traffickers don't look any specific way, and victims also come from all over. Fredericksburg actually had another case, a successful one that was prosecuted, 
that occurred with workers in a nail salon. So tonight we're going to discuss a topic that's ugly. It's brutal and it's scarring. But these are precisely the reasons that make it so compelling and make it impossible for us to look away. You were brave for being here. And as difficult as human trafficking is to discuss, I promise that you will leave here with an awareness of solid and concrete steps that you can take to make this crime a thing of the past. So before I go on with the presentation, I would like to give a special thanks to Dr. Yuk for inviting me to speak here today. And I would also like to recognize and thank Rachel McGurk from the Speaking Center for initiating and organizing this event. As a former Speaking Center consultant myself, I know personally about all of the preparation and hard work that goes into it. So thank you for everything that you did to make tonight happen. Some of you may be here for a class assignment. Others, because you've heard phrases like modern day slavery or human trafficking being spoken about in public or on the media. Whatever your reason, I would like you to leave here with a sense of what human trafficking is, the ways that it can happen, and how you can help these voiceless people be restored. So those are, that's an overview of what we'll discuss on a very macro level. Human trafficking refers to a situation where a person is forced frauded or coerced into commercial exploitation, whether that exploitation is sexual or what we traditionally consider to be labor-oriented. I will explain what all of that means a little bit later in the presentation, but for right now I would like to highlight a part of human trafficking that is less well-known than others, a context that really shocked me when I learned about it, and that is domestic minor sex trafficking. In other words, American children being sold for sex right here in the United States. I think the best way to show this is the flip. And bam, I need your help. <laughs> yes, bam. <laughs> Sorry, 